In the year of the dog eater, I existed in graffiti flyers. I painted murals on the, on the dim walls of ascension to the sun-stained fields of Red Wing Park to prove that I existed. It was back when my Lolo spoke no English and my baggy jeans symbolized my affinity for hip hop. I pop rock with flip flops, both made in sweatshops while aunties and uncles invoked the Holy Ghost at Sunday novenas. And I tried to mimic Anaya's fingertips as she shifted through her progression of rosary beads, but all I felt was the emptiness between the clefts of her hands, so I invoked the suburban ghost that lines 264 to Lynn Haven Mall with numeric offerings of 143. 637, 411, and 1020. I spoke in code because I was young and I had not mastered my own language. And in that year, the dog eater, I realized that I was speaking in two tongues. And in one, I spoke a genetic, a degenerating concern for one's life, love, family, friendship, and God into 40 bottles and empty tracks that contain metaphors of only words. Words that never seem to get jumped off the page, this blue line cage, this misplaced rage. I wanted to forget those days where I spent mispronouncing your name, so I hummed in desperation, knowing that I had mastered being indifferent about being different. The only significant difference was is that I still looked like a dog. And in that year, the dog eater, I realized that I could speak with my second tongue. And I tried to translate these echoes in this Empty house, this bullet by box, this indigenous fusion of rice dreams, colonial self-hate and suburban street slang. I spoke a hollow hollow of condensed pride, broken English, and an assortment of reasons of why I've never been to the homeland. I spoke actively about biracial tragedies and developing families so rapidly that they labeled me a militant. And I was so eager to flip it, not to be misconstrued with being flippant. I faced Chris critics and rescripted a whole new life out of the fact that these words were too big to digest. Remittances. Deportation, modernization, marginalization, gentrification, and politically motivated homicide. Because none of these things happen in Virginia Beach. So with this increase in my vocab, it has gotten so bad that I have gotten so mad that my soul experienced the jet lag of trying to translate these times. When being Filipino wasn't a label, when a revolution was something we weren't ready for. And when my community was just that. And in that year, the dog eater, I remember that they would call me a chink, that they would call me a gook, that they would call me a spick, that they would call my family dog eaters, and they'd laugh at my Lolo's accent. And the funny thing is, many of these people I've called friends. So today, as I move forward, knowing that it's supposed to be for the love, I still carry these daggers called words, these self-inflicted wounds that remind me of a revolution that is yet to begin. They remind me that me having community dreams is something for people to step on. But you know what? I can sit back and pickpocket time and hope to try to frame back those rice dreams. Because every time I've been con Every time I've been on the verge of blacking out and browning out, these students help me to remain conscious. Mm. Mm.